Joining us now, Jason Johnson, Chief Political Correspondent for Politic 365 and Political Science Professor at Hiram College, and Ron Christie, a former Special Assistant to President George W. Bush. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Good morning, Carol. Good morning. Now, see, I always thought a balanced budget was really, really important. What exactly is President Obama saying, Jason? Well, what he's saying is, I want my policies to go through, and I got reelected arguing for these policies. That, that's basically the point. What we've got here uh, is an impasse because Barack Obama feels, since he just won the presidential election on these policies, that is what the Republicans in Congress should be willing to work with. And they're not interested in that. I don't really think a balanced budget is important in and of itself, but he really doesn't care because he thinks that there are some bigger issues that he wants to tackle in his second term. Ron, what do you think? Well, I think the president has an obligation to lead the country and to outline specifically what his priorities are. And he is mandated by law to put forth a budget for the first Monday in February. He's failed to do this four out of the five years he's been in office. And I think it's very important for the American people to understand what this administration would prioritize on funding and what they wouldn't. And I listened to the way that the president demonized the Republicans and said, oh, they want to balance the budget on the backs of the poor and the elderly. That's nonsense. The Senate budget resolution proposes to spend $46 trillion over the next 10 years. Paul Ryan supposedly would put $41 trillion. Or Paul Ryan says we should increase spending by 3.5% every year, and the Senate Democrats say 5%. That's hardly cutting spending. <laughs> okay, well, you see sort of what the conversation is like on Capitol Hill, or going to be like today. <laughs> on to topic two, lawmakers in Mississippi are saying, Nanny Bloomberg, do not mess with us. Mississippi has passed a bill to prevent any ban on large sodas dubbed the anti-Bloomberg bill. This after a New York judge struck down the mayor's soda ban. Mayor Bloomberg's soda ban, that is. Perhaps understandable, except Mississippi is the fattest state in the nation with a 35% obesity rate. So the question, is Mississippi's anti-Bloomberg bill a good idea, Ron? I don't know. I mean, I think it's more symbolic than it is anything else. Uh, the fact of the matter is that chronic disease is really the driver of health care costs in this country. If you look at the money that we're spending at the federal government, you're looking about 75 cents out of every health care dollar is going to chronic disease. So I understand their really disdain with what uh, Mayor Bloomberg was trying to do. But at the same time, passing a symbolic statute, I, I think, is somewhat meaningless. Well, you know, I'm just looking at our viewer comments, Jason. Uh, this is from Donald. He said, I thought America was a free nation. Who does Bloomberg or the government think they are to try to tell us what we can or cannot do? A and I hear that, but I also know, as Ron said, we have an obesity problem in this country. People are addicted to fattening food. So what as a nation do you do? Because we all share in the health care costs. Well, look. Bloomberg's plan went too far, but he has the right idea. And the idea is to say, look, if we all end up having to pay for these costs, we got to make sure that this goes down very simply. And, and I think it had a negative economic impact, but I think his idea was good. What Mississippi's doing, I think, is a waste of time. I'm sure there's a lot more important issues down there like education and health care that they should be handling. Ron Christie, Jason Johnson, thanks for playing today. We appreciate